How many of you did not know that the first president of Texas was buried right here in Galveston? It's really windy today and my hair is not cooperating. Let's explore the life of David G. Burnett, the first president of Texas, a steadfast figure who played a pivotal role in securing Texas independence. He temporarily brought the capital of Texas to Galveston and he did not get along with revered Texas general and later president, Sam Houston. Let's get into it. Welcome to Galveston Unscripted. David G. Burnett was born in Newark, New Jersey in 1788. He was a staunch religious man who didn't curse, drink, or smoke. I mean, this guy despised profanity and liquor. By the time Burnett had made it to Texas in 1826, he was no stranger to revolution. He had joined Simone Bolivar in the Latin American Wars for Independence, fighting in Venezuela and Chile for their independence from Spain. These revolutions were inspired by Simone Bolivar, the same man that Bolivar Peninsula is named after. Burnett moved to Texas in 1826, joining Stephen F. Austin in his colony. Burnett was looking at becoming an empresario, a landowner that would bring settlers into Mexican Texas, which didn't go too well for him. He ended up losing most of the land he was granted, and he refused to comply with the Mexican law at the time that would force him to convert to Roman Catholicism. Throughout the 1830s in Texas, revolution was in the air. At the time, Texas was joined with another Mexican state, Coahuila. Coahuila y Texas was a massive territory under a strong central Mexican government. And the outbreak of the Texas Revolution begins in October of 1835 with small skirmishes between Texian settlers and the Mexican army. Burnett had connections all over the United States, many of which supported the Texas cause. Some of the most famous artillery used during the Texas Revolution, the Twin Sisters, a pair of cannons, was a gift from the citizens of Cincinnati, Ohio, which was acquired through Burnett's business connections. Mexican General Santa Ana is sent into Texas to quell the rebelling Texians. David Burnett had been a part of the conversation of declaring independence from Mexico, but he wasn't always on the side of complete independence, but rather Texas becoming its own state under the Mexican government, separate from Coahuila. But one thing changed his mind, the Battle at the Alamo, where 189 Texians were killed by Santa Ana's troops. On March 1st, 1836, just days after the 13-day siege, a meeting of Texas leaders was called at Washington on the Brazos. This meeting is known as the Convention of 1836. This meeting on what to do with Texas went on for days until an uncharismatic man, David G. Burnett, stood up and gave a speech to the dozens of infuriated men at this convention. Burnett convinced the delegates at this convention to form a temporary government and elected Burnett as the temporary president, becoming the first president of Texas. The Texas Declaration of Independence was drafted and unanimously agreed upon. Burnett knew this was an interim position until the revolution was won and an official government could be elected. The newly formed government learned that Mexican forces were only 60 miles away and Burnett led a strategic retreat. He was headed towards Harrisburg, just a few miles south of modern day Houston. When Mexican troops caught up to them in Harrisburg, they made their way down to Galveston, making Galveston a temporary capital of Texas. This government retreat is known as the runaway scrape. Burnett's decision to move the newly formed government around Texas started his bitter feud with Sam Houston. Sam Houston and many Texans viewed this as fleeing, while Burnett and the Texas government viewed it as survival. The twin sisters arrived just in time for the Battle of San Jacinto. The Texas government remained on Galveston Island until the Battle of San Jacinto, which was won by General Sam Houston and the Texian forces. Santa Ana's Mexican army was finally defeated and Santa Ana was captured. Texans were absolutely furious and understandably so that Santa Ana was allowed to live. Santa Ana was responsible for the killing of Texians at the Alamo and the Goliath, but Burnett refused to allow the most valuable asset that would solidify Texas independence be killed. Although under duress, Santa Ana signs the Treaty of Velasco, ensuring Mexican troops would retreat south of the Rio Grande and Mexico would recognize Texas as an independent nation. Many Texans were furious that Burnett allowed Santa Ana to return to Mexico and not be executed, but the treaty and safe return of Santa Ana to Mexico gave the Republic of Texas some breathing room. And this is where Burnett's political troubles start. Burnett's interim presidency was only eight months and was very difficult from revolution to republic and constant criticism from citizens and other government officials. In the fall of 1836, General Sam Houston was elected president. 
becoming the first president of Texas elected by the citizens of Texas. Burnett couldn't stand Sam Houston's gruff nature of drinking, smoking, and cursing, and the name-calling and mudslinging between the two continued, dousing the flame on Burnett's political career and reputation. Through the next two decades, Burnett had a bumpy political road. Never gaining much influence or traction, Texas officially joined the Union in 1846, and Burnett began to focus on his family. Sadly, he lost his wife in 1858 and son in 1865 in the Civil War, leaving Burnett alone, depressed, and without money or work. Burnett moved to Galveston to live with one of his closest friends of Texas Revolution and Civil War notoriety, Sidney Sherman. Burnett rented out his farm near Houston for a meager income living his remaining years in Galveston. In 1870, at the age of 82, Burnett died here on the island. The life of David G. Burnett is a story of revolution and nation building. Burnett stood for his principles and a cause greater than himself. And despite the challenges Burnett faced, his legacy still lives on through the contributions to the Republic and the state of Texas. His final years, marked by personal loss and solitude, paint a picture of the toll that history could play on an individual. I'm here at Lakeview Cemetery in between 57th and 59th Street, where I'm going to find David G. Burnett's grave site. Right when you pull into the cemetery, you see this historical marker right here for David G. Burnett. Now, Lakeview Cemetery and the surrounding cemeteries are quite large and sometimes hard to navigate. But let's go see where David Burnett was buried. I am in the northernmost section of Lakeview Cemetery, where we have this giant obelisk right here. Now, this is where David Burnett was buried next to Sidney Sherman, one of his good friends stemming back to the early days of Texas. How many of you did not know that the first president of Texas was buried right here in Galveston? If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on all social media. We are everywhere. And if you haven't yet, go check out the podcast. We've got hours and hours of historical content on that podcast feed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Galveston Unscripted.